BitCon is cooked. Is what I would say if I was some uncultured swine. What's up, y'all? Um, and welcome back to Fireplace. And today we are going to be talking about VidCon. I went to VidCon 2024, uh, you know what I'm saying? And it was an interesting event to say the least, you know what I'm saying? Uh, there was a lot that I got to do. Uh, I got to see a lot of things. I got to do a lot of things. I got to meet a lot of people, uh, lots of networking opportunities. Uh, if you clicked on this video, you probably were like me and didn't really know much about uh, VidCon or you got the ticket and you're really just not sure if VidCon is for you or what to expect. Um, that's kind of how I was uh, when I got my VidCon ticket. So in this video, I'm gonna talk to you guys about every aspect of my experience in ultimately figuring out, should you go to VidCon? And if you are trying to go to VidCon, what is there to expect? Um, now, I want to give a couple of disclaimers now because uh, obviously my experience is going to be specific compared to someone else's. This is my first ever VidCon that I went to, so uh, I don't have the luxury of being able to look back at other experiences or other people who, uh, or from your perspective, other people who um, have gone through VidCon and have gotten to experience that VidCon uh, culture, you know what I'm saying? You'll also be hearing from the perspective of someone who uh, took the creator track, you know what I'm saying? Like I specifically got the creator track for all four days of VidCon. So, um, you know, like I'm a little past the community track, but not quite to the industry. So, um, you know, if y'all ready to ride along and tag along to everything, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and click the bell for notifications on all them vidges. Now let's jump into it, shall we? Meet and greets. Oh boy. The meet and greets were kind of okay. Um, I didn't mind the line at the time because, uh, like line wise, which I'll get into this later, but lines are like ridiculous at VidCon. Uh, but in the aspect of meet and greets in particular, it went pretty quickly. I was lucky to be able to do uh, a meet and greet early in the morning. Uh, like my meet and greet was at, uh, I think 10 a.m. And it was with the homies, Ned's Declassified, you know what I'm saying? But it was the post-survival guide. The main cast of Ned's Declassified, uh, Devin Workheiser, Lindsey Shaw, and I'm so sorry, the, the last the last person's name I'm forgetting. So I only know him by Cookie, so sorry, sorry, bro. I got to do a lot uh, with the Ned's Declassified team. Like they allowed hugs, they allowed uh, autographs, um, and I, in particular, I just got to really like talk to them for a pretty decent amount of time. You know what I'm saying? Um, the entire experience was honestly incredible. Um, uh, just getting to meet them. Now the process that led up to that meet and greet, not quite what I prefer. Truth be told, I don't quite remember the entire process, but the biggest things that I do remember is that I had to select and rank um, all of the content creators that I was even remotely interested in wanting to meet. I had to, I had to pick like at least 15 out of, I don't know how many content creators they have, but I had to pick at least 15. And then from there, uh, I had to rank those 15. And no, like not to discredit any of the selections, every all of the content creators there were incredible and awesome in their own way, obviously. But, um, I, I honestly only picked three, like there's only three that I was actually interested in wanting to meet. And the, the main one that I wanted to meet, I got to meet everybody else. I was like, okay, <laughs> like, it's cool. If I meet you, it's cool. If I don't, you know what I'm saying? Overall meet and greets, like, you know, it is great to be able to meet the, you know, some of your you know, some people who you might have had like super adoration for and admiration for. Um, 
you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just that sometimes the, the process leading up to the actual day of the meet and greet, not quite what I enjoyed. Now let's talk about the expo hall. Um, the expo hall, which is basically the lower, the lowest level uh, of the Anaheim convention, um, that was a doozy. Uh, thing is, is that at the actual expo hall, there are a lot of things for you to do. There's competitions you can join. There's um, toys and things that you can pick up for free. There's caricatures that you that can people can draw. Like there's so many things that you can do in expo hall, and that's where the vast majority of the people are going to be uh, in the the community track. Uh, the vast majority of people from the community track, those are the people who are going to be in that expo hall. But my God, the lines, the lines, the oh my God. lines, those lines were ridiculous, bro. And don't be um, there early. Don't be there trying to like uh, come in early and trying to get there because people will literally run you down to get to whatever um, uh, expo particular booth that they're trying to get to. Like they will, they, these kids and even some of these adults will run you over to get to, um, to get to whatever line they're trying to join. It is insane. Uh, they had a couple of different areas where uh, they had this like Minecraft thing um, that you can like traverse in like a IRL Minecraft-ish world. Um, uh, they had like an AI booth that could create like an AI version of yourself. So they had a lot of stuff that was tech technically free but you you kind of already paid for it in the in the ticket pass now i'll also be honest and this is kind of a disclaimer but i didn't spend a lot of time in the expo hall compared to the creator track level that was on the second floor um uh because a lot of what i was trying to do there was uh as a creator i wanted to do more of the workshops and learn more about the ins and outs of youtube as well as network and things like that but when it comes to the actual expo hall and everything there are fun things to do but you absolutely just gotta know that the lines is going to be one of the worst experiences for you the creator track so um the creator track um, for VidCon was awesome um, in a lot of ways. Some of the best parts of it were the workshops. Um, I got to sit in a lot of workshops, like tons of them. And uh, workshop wise, like they really broke down a lot of some of the uh, best aspects of learning about YouTube, uh, learning about its algorithm, learning uh, about um, the viewers themselves, um, and sometimes even just learning about the ins and outs of becoming a content creator, um, especially like a full-time content creator. Like a lot of that information, you know, always felt like it was, you know, kind of from like a, it was like gatekeeped, you know? But um, at VidCon, they really give you like a lot of the details and ins and outs of how YouTube operates. They had a couple of really cool perks for you as a creator. Um, uh, some of the perks that you get as well with being a creator there uh, or having the creator track is um, they had this area called the YouTube Creator Station and you got to experience so much in this like private area like they had like a locker area where you can take a whole bunch of you know really cool pictures if you wanted to they even had an area where you were able to get um a custom engraved uh canteen um you know what i'm saying like i got to get this it was pretty quick as well like um, I mean, you had to stand in the line for it, but that line, it was going by like that. Um, that was a lot of the reason why the people were like trying to get in there because it was like, nah, I want my, I want my custom designed uh, mug. So they had that. They had an area where you could even win one of these um, uh, medals. This is actually real too. This isn't like plastic. You hear that? Hear that? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, I'm slanging metal. What? 
they had uh, an area where you could take a whole bunch of pictures um it was like well not pictures more like videos uh you could take uh like these really cool really crisp uh camera like videos and um they were amazing they were really really cool um, you know what I'm saying? I got a, I got a lot of, uh, I got a lot of attention for that. Um, now I will also say like, if you are a content creator, uh, and you're standing in a line where a whole bunch of other content creators, you better be networking, man. You better be talking to people like there's, and the thing is, is that there's a lot of people who probably chose to not. And I mean, you know, to each his own, if you're an introvert, and you took the creator track, that is a choice. I'll say that much, you know what I'm saying? There's so much room and so much avenue for you to meet people, uh, not even necessarily like other influencers in particular. Like I'm talking about, you can meet industry people, you can meet managers, uh, you can meet tech people, you can meet editors, writers, like the world is really your oyster uh when it comes to being in the creator uh having that creator track um but you also really have to know how to capitalize on opportunities um for example uh um like a lot of times there were people getting interviewed all over the place on um, on the second floor on the creator track area so uh you know if you were you know if you were like around and you were seeing someone getting interviewed like you know what i'm saying it may be beneficial for you to stick around to watch to react you know um because they may ask you next so most most people especially if it was like content creators asking other content creators things like most of the time they're asking they're asking for multiple opinions so it could be advantageous for you to stick around maybe you get a little cameo into that video um i got to do that with tons of different people i mean some in the in the content creator station or youtube creator station some outside i got interviewed so much but that's also slightly because of what i was wearing too i was wearing a lot of i was wearing a lot of really cool interesting things i'll say that much you know what i'm saying medallion um uh but uh overall though the creator track was really really good for you being able to network with other people being able to learn things um with the workshops uh and more now i will say that um when it comes to the workshops and things um i did not like that it was all basically like panels and like presentations now what i mean by that is that um you know and this could be different with versus like other vidcons but uh for vidcon 2024 there were no workshops that were actually geared towards like networking and having fun what i mean by that is um for example at twitchcon at twitchcon we were able to do Zumba. We were able to learn break dancing. We were able to do improv. And these were all workshops and they were all available to everyone, not just creator, not just community, not just whatever. Um, and the thing is, is that like in this case, the workshops, most of, if not all of them were all information based, which is a bittersweet thing on one side great that i'm getting all this information it feels like i'm in a classroom learning stuff you know but on the other side there's not much room for fun in that you know what i'm saying there's not much room for like uh to be able to showcase the type of person you are you know the type of creator you are or whatever you know what i'm saying because it's just so it's just like so much you know another aspect of the uh creator uh track that i did not like workshop wise was that some of those panels were not being as um informative as i'd prefer uh now you know i'm not gonna talk about specifics on that but just know that like the best workshops were the ones where it was just one person 
uh, flipping through slideshows and giving you information uh, per slideshow versus a panelist of people, like three, four people talking to each other uh, about topics, basically. Um, you know, now, I mean, again, you know, this is my opinion, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's opinion might be different. I know some people prefer that because, uh, you know, to a certain extent, it gives a perspective based off of someone who is, who is succeeding, you know, so you do have that insider look, but at the same time, it was less geared towards uh, informative and more about like, observative if that makes sense it was more observation rather than information you know and i need the information anybody who's doing a, a content creator track they want the information so that's kind of why uh you know that's kind of why it was more advantageous to go to the workshops uh that dealt with one person versus a panelist of people bid on parties now uh for the vidcon parties um let me just start by saying that i understand that i may not exactly have been the demographic for uh the vidcon parties you know what i'm saying i mean the demographic technically was for everyone you know what i'm saying like you could have you could have went if you were an adult or a kid or whatever um but thing is i'm a man you know and i'm, I'm a man that likes uh, uh, manly parties. That's not what I should say. I like adult parties. You know what I'm saying? No ditty. Uh, but um, I say that to say that like I went to like two parties, right? Um, one was like for the second night and the last one was for um, a party that was specifically for creators. So if you were a creator, uh, you specifically were able to go to this like rooftop party, which was 100% really good for networking and things like that. When it comes to when it comes to like the dancing aspects of uh, parties, that's kind of like my forte. I love dancing. And um, there wasn't a lot of room to be able to do that, especially on the rooftop of the creator party. Um, but to add to that, to get back to my point, um, uh, the, the demographic was a little more geared towards kids. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, obviously kids go to, uh, I was about to say TwitchCon, kids go to VidCon, you know what I'm saying? So um, being able to uh party the way i wanted to was not the way i was able to party you know what i'm saying um uh now you know that being said though like uh at the parties that i did get to go to the dance parties in particular um you know they were giving out like shirts and things like that and uh the shop the people who were like chaperoning their kids they got to you know kind of watch everything but there wasn't a lot of room for you to be able to like you know get down you know what i'm saying the music wasn't quite what i was expecting but i mean it was it, like if you're a kid you probably would have really enjoyed it if you were a chaperone it's for the chill it's for the cheering you know but um uh yeah not particularly my thing uh you know what i'm saying so i didn't really stick around for the parties that much if you're looking for like if you're going to vidcon to go to parties I don't even know what to say to you, except don't. Uh, I would, yeah, shouldn't have to. But um, yeah, that's that's uh, that's the best thing I could put in for parties. Now, a couple of miscellaneous things. Um, uh, first off, parking. Parking uh, at Anaheim is abysmal. I'm just gonna you know be real with y'all on that. Um, uh, I came in on Wednesday. Uh, and had to park pretty much every single day at the Anaheim Convention Center. Um, it's uh, they charged us twenty dollars a day. So I mean, all together, if you, especially if you're planning on going on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, or whatever the four day time frame is, expect to pay around eighty dollars uh, to add to the cost of however much it costs for you to uh, uh, for your ticket. So. Uh, yeah, uh, it was not great. And on top of that, it was not convenient either. Like once you parked, you weren't able to go directly into the Anaheim Convention Center. Like they had to box 
everybody out so once you go into the center you'd have to leave the center and go outside to stand in line so you can yeah just stand in another line so um like i said not ideal uh you know what i'm saying uh parking yeah wasn't that great but um it's the only option you have otherwise like there's nothing remotely close uh not, no spot hero nothing like that so uh keep that in mind another thing to keep in mind is food um uh, when it comes to the food that's there it is expensive because it's los angeles if 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 the vidcon is happening in anaheim the food's going to be expensive um they have food trucks out there starting on wednesday they had a couple of free stuff just to keep people like i guess hydrated you know what i'm saying they gave out a couple of little waters um they had, the, they had like a fanta truck um that was giving out these like sherber mixed with the fanta um uh the fanta drink and that was good like it tasted good but like you know that's it though everything else pretty much is gonna cost you and i'll be honest like they had burgers and stuff there that was like 15 20 dollars um so you know like unless you're gonna like well i don't even think you can pack really so um if you do decide to eat there just know that you're going to probably spend a lot the last thing i do want to mention is wardrobe um or cosplay if you want to be fancy about it um thing is is that when it comes to like wearing um uh, clothing there i found uh what really worked for me is kind of going the route of not necessarily cosplay but not necessarily like not cosplay either. So what does that mean? Like I basically tried to pick stuff that people had an interest in, but at the same time, it wasn't so far ahead that it like alienated them from you as a creator, you know? Like, cause you know how sometimes you see cosplayers who they dress up in full on garb, like they'll wear an entire, I don't know, as an example, like an entire master chief suit. And you're like, bro that suit is sick and you'll look at them and you're like oh yeah like you know like that's sick or whatever but after that you're all you're almost a little intimidated because you feel like someone spent so much time meticulously working on that you feel like all right i'll give you that compliment and move on you know what i'm saying um or you dress out so little that like from the opposite end of the spectrum you uh uh if you decide to not wear anything you decide to be you know kind of just your av your average joe schmo guy um which there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with wardrobe at all really but uh um if you dress up if you don't decide to dress up more likely than not there's not going to be a lot of um uh eyes on you which just means that don't expect don't expect a lot of people who are going to want to like pull you out of an interview um, or people expecting or or don't expect to like be outed by some type of sponsor there and ask and, you know, and asking and them putting you into something or asking you to do something. Uh, my, my Hufflepuff gear, you know, what I'm saying my Hufflepuff gear really came through. I got interviewed by a lot of people. Um, I definitely had a couple of moments where there was like camera crew just like. Ooh, like do something cool so I, I just say that to say that like if you are if you're i mean if you're a community you know don't even worry about this really but if you're a content creator and you know or at the very least if you are if you want the content creator track i would recommend trying to wear something that stands out a little bit uh you know what i'm saying because there's going to be a lot of people who don't dress up and it's going to be about like half of that amount of audience who does and if and even if they do they might not put a lot of effort into it so i'd recommend try wearing something that's going to be slightly nerdyish, but not so nerdy that it alienates you know folks you'll find the sweet spot in that somewhere so honestly to recap over everything that we've discussed uh you know what i'm saying um uh now we're gonna really just uh touch base over everything that you know we've previously kind of mentioned in the whole idea of pros and cons um honestly there are tons and tons of pros uh especially when it comes to the idea of 
um, going to VidCon to enjoy a lot of the amenities that it has because it does have a lot of amenities. There's a lot of opportunities to get to meet people, to get to network with a lot of people. The workshops were helpful um, in getting to understand YouTube better um, based off of where it is now and where it will be in the future, which are all very, very important things um, for a creator. So from a creator standpoint, tons and tons of pros now for the cons um know that if you don't like lines don't go to this if you if you hate lines don't go to this i promise you like because you're going to be spending most of your time going line to line to line to line to line to line to line um on top of that uh the price is on the steep side you know what i'm saying uh especially if you count if you account for parking um you know what i'm saying parking is not fun um you know and that's even though it's designated parking again it's about 80 dollars in total on top of the ticket price so keep that in mind and keep in mind that you're going to be waiting a long time standing in long lines to do anything and that's even from a creator standpoint too creators industry no matter which track you chose you will be waiting a lot um another uh thing is that the workshops again uh the workshops were awesome and very informative but there's not a lot of fun workshops that's what that's the thing for me i wanted something that was a little bit more fun depending on what you're into uh so it really just kind of depends which i would say that is the biggest kind of pro and con is that a lot of what is going to make vidcon fun for you is based off of the type of person you are um you know what i'm saying which ultimately encapsules the the whole video truth be told what is going to make vidcon fun for you is the type of person you are if you're the type of person that's like kind of an introvert not really wanting to like talk to people or interact with people or uh um you know uh and but you do like to consume content just stay home you know what i'm saying like uh in my opinion in my opinion just chill you know what i'm saying like like it's not worth the price tag but if you're the type of person who likes to meet people especially if you're a content creator you want to meet people you want to uh capitalize on certain opportunities you know what i'm saying um you know even despite the lines or whatever I would actually recommend checking VidCon out at least once. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like overall, I honestly would say that there's that VidCon 2024 was a good time. You know what I'm saying? Would I go again? Considering that I go to TwitchCon already, um, it wouldn't be soon. Like I probably won't go next year. But maybe the year after that, you know, I haven't quite decided yet. But uh, like overall, though, I would say if it was a scale of one to five, um, I would put this at a um, three point five, you know, uh, three point five to four. I'll say that like, you know, I give it a three point five to four. Uh, definitely some things that I wish were there and were better. But at the same time, like it did give me some invaluable information, which is one of the biggest reasons why I was going in the first place. So, um, you know, I don't agree with the idea that like this VidCon was like very boring or chill or whatever. Like this VidCon was stacked. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It was stacked to the brim with a lot of things for people to do. But just know that like uh, it is hard to coordinate those things when there's so many lines like it was hard for me to even be able to do anything like expo wise because I was working so hard on workshop stuff and because there's lines you don't even have enough time as a creator to balance like doing workshops and trying to get valuable information and then trying to spend time in the expo hall. Uh, like I said, that was pretty much my VidCon 2024. Um, I mean, make it make it as much as you, you know, make it what you make of it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody's, you know, pers perspective 
uh is gonna be a little bit different but that's the best part about youtube you know what i'm saying it's all about the perspective you know uh if you're a content creator you know what i'm saying it's good i would definitely say uh go for it especially if you haven't gone before this was my first one and it was a good time if you're not a content creator and you haven't gone to vidcon before you should probably check it out at least once you know see what you think about it you know what i'm saying um but honestly if i wasn't a content creator i'd probably only get like a, a one one day pass you know a one day ticket um i wouldn't i probably wouldn't be going like multiple days if if that if it were me personally but you know um like i said it's all about that perspective you know what i'm saying thank you guys so much for tuning in you know what i'm saying and uh checking out this uh vidcon uh recap slash i don't know info channel or something info video whatever uh if you like what you saw make sure to like share and subscribe click that bell for notifications on all them videos leave a comment uh if you went to vidcon what was your favorite part about vidcon if you didn't go to vidcon do you want to go now you know what i'm saying let us know in the comments we do check our comments and if you did go to vidcon and you are a content creator and you want to work with your boys hit us up you know what i'm saying hit us up be like hey yo i want to be in your videos or hey yo i was at vidcon i want to be in your videos or hey yo i guess that's it <laughs>